Hey guys, welcome back here to Extreme IE. In this particular video, we're going to take a quick look at using the weight to change our BGP path selection. So what in the world does that mean? Well, let me first illustrate some of the things that we have going on in this network. So we're going to have 192.168.4.1 and we'll have 4.2 and 4.3. Uh, all of these guys are going to be slash 32s. So all three of these networks will be slash 32s. We're going to have the same thing going on on R1. So we'll have 192, uh, 168, 1.1, 1.2, and 1.3. And again, all three of these are going to be slash 32s. The loopback address IDs, so they're going to be loopback 1, loopback 2, loopback 3. I, I have OCD apparently, so you know you guys can can kind of put that together in your minds. Um, now, we're going to be running eBGP throughout this network, so where you see BGP and the, the autonomous system was the RID, take a wild guess what our ASNs are going to be. We're going to have ASN1, ASN2, ASN3, 5, uh, four, I know I just counted backwards, but you'll live with it, and AS6, right? So these are going to be the ASNs that we're going to be dealing with. You can see the IP addresses are going to be dot .2 at each device. Uh, and lastly, the 10.rid.rid, basically what that's saying is that we're going to have the lower router ID first and followed by the, the higher. So this would be 10.1.2.0 slash 24. Uh, this would be 10.1.3. This would be 3.5, 2.4. Am I getting obnoxious yet? And 5.6, right? So that, that's how our network is going to be set up. Now, we haven't tweaked any BGP attributes in this network. We've just basically come in, we've set up OSPF process ID number one, everything in area zero. We've advertised out our loopback zero interfaces on all of the devices. And then we went ahead and we peered uh, external BGP with those loopbacks and we redistributed all of our three uh, three loopback interfaces here. So looking at this network and understanding our BGP selection process, we should be able to pretty much quickly figure out how R1 is going to route to these three networks, right? So let's just quickly write out our best pass selection. So we're going to say N Willa Omni. Okay, and Willa Omni. I know that's a silly acronym, but we as Cisco engineers love our acronyms, and so we're just going to have to live with this one. We're just going to have to learn this word. So, so basically here, what's happening? Well, we're going to go ahead and say, is the next hop reachable? Well, of course it is, because this is a lab. So, I mean, of course, everything's working right. So we know that the next hop of two and three is reachable. So the next thing we're going to look at is the weight. And again, I already said that we didn't tweak anything. So is the weight different going to any particular hop? No, it's not. So we're good to go. Then we're going to look at the local preference. Is the local preference different going to every hop, going to, e e you know, either hop? No, it's not. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on. Remember that when we were deciding who to pick as our best path, we're going to stop essentially at that algorithm, at that option or that attribute that essentially doesn't match. We're going to look at who's the best, right? So now we're going to say, all right, I'm going to prefer any locally originated routes over the aggregate addresses or the aggregate routes. And, and here R4 is advertising those routes in both directions. We don't really have anything to think about here. So again, we pass the, local, the, the locally originated routes attribute or, or, or preference algorithm, however you want to uh, you know, say that. Now we get to the AS path, and now we have an issue. Because, well, not really an issue, but now we have a, a difference, right? Because take a look at how R1 would route to R4 if he went through R3. So, so his pure AS here would be 3, right? And then his transit AS... <clears throat> Uh, transit AS would be 5, his transit AS over here would be 6, and then his origin AS over here, so I'm just going to write origin over here, his origin AS would be 4, right? <clears throat> so he would have to go through 3, 5, 6, 4 in order to get to the 192.168.4 prefixes. But what if he went through R2? Well, here he would just have to go to the pure AS of 2, and then he would end up at this origin AS of four. So, I mean, as a logical thinking human being, which one would you pick? I mean, would you take, you know, the long, you know, back road with all these different stoplights and around these corners and all that? Or would you just take the quick highway where you could do 80 miles an hour and it was a straight run? Most people would probably pick the highway. At least I know I would because I like to drive fast and take chances. So, Let's take a look at R1 here, and let's see if uh, Uncle JP here is lying to you. So I'm going to say show IP BGP, and I'm going to type it correctly. So we'll say show IP BGP, and here is our 
here is our best path to go to 192.168.4.1. So you can see here what I've highlighted is that we've selected the shortest AS path. So here's, you know, we're going to go to the pure AS of 2, and then we're going to end up at the origin AS of 4. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not going to go ahead and have this kind of as a backup and a standby. I mean, we're not adding it to the routing table because we're not doing multipathing. We don't have our maximum paths enabled or anything like that. So, you know, we're just showing the point that we will have this in our BGP table, but we're not going to throw it into our routing table. We're not going to consider it a valid and best route because this guy has the shortest AS path. Now, now we come to the point where we want to tweak this. Well, what attribute would we use to tweak it? In this video, you, you obviously clicked on watching the video for weight, so we're not going to use local preference. We're going to use the weight. Now, what I want to mention here before we go ahead and do that is the weight is only going to be Cisco proprietary, so it's basically a Cisco proprietary attribute on Cisco devices. And the other thing is that it's going to be a local attribute, so it's Cisco and local, right? Meaning that R2 can never send the weight to another device. So I could never go on to R2 and tell R1 that his weight is whatever value. The funny thing is that it will actually accept the command and it'll keep it there, but it won't actually work, right? The iOS will bark at you. I'll, I'll prove that when we end the video. So the only way we can assign the weight is locally here on R1, and we have to do it in the inbound direction on R1. So let's go ahead and do that. There's two different ways. Well, there's there's two main ways we can do that, and then we can manipulate it out with, with different access lists if we want to, and I'll kind of show you how to do that. So I'm going to say router BGP1 which is our process ID, and I'm going to say neighbor. What am I looking to do? I'm looking to make R3 my best path, right, which is not natural for BGP, but I'm going to go ahead and manipulate the weight. So I'm going to say neighbor 3.3.3, and BGP gives me this nifty-difty weight command. Now, if I want to, I can max this out at 65,535 if I really want to. Now, what would that do for me? That would essentially protect me from maybe somebody coming in later on down the road and changing the weight. Maybe they're not paying attention, you know, you know, maybe they go in and they say, I, you know, I really want R2 to be used, and I, you know, they give it a weight of 125, and and maybe I only gave it a weight when I did it a year ago of 100, and now somebody messes with my configuration. I could go in and give it uh, a weight of 65, 535 if I wanted to. Now, essentially here, as you can see, the default weight is going to be zero for for all of our uh, all of our learned routes. However, the default weight for the locally originated routes, how can I tell that? Because these guys are all zeros, so the next hop is essentially myself, right? So the the, the locally originated routes are going to have a weight of 32,768, but all of the learned prefixes here are going to have a weight of zero. Now, anything higher than zero, so the highest weight is going to be preferred. So if I say one, and then I come in, and by the way, we should always clear our BGP process. I recommend that you do it softly whenever we change some of these attributes. And then I say show IP BGP, you're going to see that now I've gone ahead and manipulated this guy to be a weight of one. And you can see now that we've changed our valid and best path from R2 to R3. So now here is the entry that we're going to go ahead and add into our routing table. So now we're going to use the pure AS of 3, then we're going to go to the transit AS of 5, 6, and end up at the origin AS of 4, right? So now here is our best path. Let's just prove that out, make sure that Uncle JP is not lying. So we're going to say trace to 3.3.3. .3 .3. And we're going to source that from our loopback one. Uh, let's actually do uh, exit and say no IP domain lookup. Okay. And we'll say do trace. Uh, we'll say 192. I actually picked the wrong address. So we'll say 192.168.4.1. And we'll source that from our loopback one interface. And you can see that we do take the long way around, right? So we're, we're going to go to router three, router five, router six, and end up over at router four. Okay, so now let's take a look at the other way that we can mess around with this, and that is with a route map. So I'm going to say route map, and I'm going to call this weight. Actually, let me back up because I usually have an OCD habit that uh, these guys have to be in capital letters. Now, I could just hit enter here, or I could say the permit statement and, and call it 10. This would kind of be the default, but you know, it, it's, always, it's always better to go ahead and make sure that you type in permit 10 just to validate that you know, you, you, if you're like me, you want to have that control. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say set weight. Actually, that shouldn't be capitalized. So we'll say set weight, and I'm just going to say two. So I'll make it one higher than one. Remember, the highest wins. I don't have to go crazy. I don't have to say a thousand or or two hundred or one twenty-five. I can just say two, right? The higher is going to win. Now, if I really wanted to here, what I could do is I could set the weight based on an ACL. So I could come in here and say access list. Uh, and say access list one permit 192.168.4.1 and I could come back into my route map config t uh, route hyphen map and I could say uh, wait all right and I could say match IP address one so do show run section access or I'm sorry route map and so this route map wait here is going to be matching based on this ACL so do show run section access list Okay, and this a this ACL here. Well, let me. I have I have many more ACLs here that I need to remove. They're left over, so let me just pop that out. And we'll pop this one guy back in. There we go. Do show run section access. And there we go. Okay, so so now my route map is going to be matching just based on this one prefix. So if I applied this. The, the way that I have it set up right now, what we would see is we would just see this 192.168.4.1 have an increased weight. Okay, I'm not going to do that. I just wanted to show you the syntax. So let's say do show run section route map. <clears throat> and I'm going to go into the route map and just remove that weight address command. Uh, I'm sorry, that uh, that match IP address command. And we'll say exit and do show run section route map. Make sure that essentially we, we have it set up correctly. Router BGP1. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to go back and I'm going to type my neighbor statement because what I want to do is I want to increase the weight going to neighbor two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flop it back the other way. Right now, because we have a weight of one going in this direction or essentially inbound on R1, every time R3 sends us an update, we're going to apply the weight of one going in this direction so that that means that all of our traffic going back or going out is going to be towards R3, right? Because R3 has the higher weight. What we're going to do is we're going to flip that back around the other direction so that we have a weight of two coming inbound from all the updates from R2 so that, again, all of our outbound traffic heads out to R2, okay? So we'll say neighbor 2.2.2, .2 and I'm going to say route hyphen map. We'll say weight, and I'm going to say in. Okay, do show run section router BGP. Let's take a look at our config quickly. So here's us setting the weight to that particular neighbor, and then here's us setting the route map to router two. So these are, these are the different ways we can manipulate the weight on our device. Keep in mind it is only local and it's inbound. And again, if I wanted to, I could match this, this route map here to specific prefixes and only change the weight on those specific addresses if I wanted to. Do clear IP BGP star soft. Let's say do show IP BGP. And you can see here that we've now manipulated the weight. So we have two over here, we have one here, and what's our best path now? We've gone ahead and flipped it back over to R2. So here's our valid and best. So if I scroll up here, we can see this is our... Uh, our valid and our best path going out to that particular prefix. So now we're going to choose R2 in order to get to that network. Now, I promised you guys that I would prove something and I don't want to be a liar. So I'm going to say uh, enable config T. Let's configure a route map here. We're just going to say wait and we'll say permit 10 and we'll say set wait. And all I'll do is say 10. And I want to just show you what BGP is going to do here when we try to apply this in the outbound direction for those of you guys that have never tried it. Okay, so I'm going to say neighbor 1.1.1. What if I want to tell R1 from R2 that my weight is essentially higher? If I say route hyphen map and I say weight out, you can see the iOS barks at me. It says, hey, buddy, you know, I'm going to accept the command, but you, you're not allowed to use it. This isn't supported. And, and this is, again, the great thing that I love about BGP. Do show run section router. Uh, BGP. I mean, I mean, it takes the command, and it, it's going to stay here forever. I mean, it's it's never going to error out. It's not like it's going to do anything. It's just going to sit there. And what we'll do is over time, I mean, we'll consistently see this pop-up message. But the danger comes is, what if we don't have console logging turned on, or or we're 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 connected to our VTY lines? You see it popping up here again. You know, we're connected to our VTY lines, and we we don't have logging enabled to the screen. And you know, we don't get this pop-up message. You'll apply this command, and you'll be like me sitting there. For an hour wondering why weight didn't work until
until you actually take the time to read up on it and understand that, oops, what you did was completely wrong. So, you know, we're going to go ahead and remove this. So I just wanted to illustrate here that weight is never going to be something that you can send outbound. Again, it's only going to be a local decision and it's Cisco proprietary. So it doesn't really matter. Do you show run section router BGP? It doesn't really matter which way you use. Uh, to me, I, I'm a big fan on saving on typing. So I'm generally going to use this one if I want to manipulate the weight. Unless, of course, I have some different prefixes that I want to change. So if I only wanted to say, hey, you know, for 192.168.4.1, I want you to go to R2. But for the rest of the prefixes, so 4.2 and 4.3, I want you to go to R3. Then I would probably use this option here because then I can match the route map to an ACL and I would point it towards that particular prefix. So really understanding all the different options that you have is key to uh, manipulating your attributes. But I want to be honest with you. I want to say the core of doing that is going to be remembering your best pass selection because if you're going to start manipulating you know, further down here, like maybe your med or your origin code, it's not going to help you because your AS path is what's uh, what's causing your path to be different. So you, you typically want to start out with weight or local preference. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something. I'll see you in the next little snippet. You guys enjoy.